Welcome to the FL Studio Pickup Video Tutorial Series. In this short series, we'll look at some of the common steps that are used when building a song inside FL Studio. These steps are not hard, fast rules that need to be followed. However, the purpose of these videos is to give some of the viewers some ground in which they can start to build from. In this first video, we'll be taking a look at how to program in the pattern sequencer to build some simple drum beats, as well as programming some basic synth lines. We'll also look at how to expand the power of the pattern sequencer by using the step editor. Let's start by building a simple drum beat. First, I'm going to program a beat using sampler channels, then later demonstrating building a synth line using one of the many fabulous synth plugins and the pattern sequencer's piano roll. Sampler channels are basically used when you want to trigger audio samples that can be loaded from the built-in sound library or one of your own samples. Sampler channels are perfect really for building a drum beat, as the triggers from the pattern sequencer are typically one-shot triggers. So let's demonstrate by adding a kick drum that I like to the kick drum channel of the default song. I should point out here that there is actually already a kick drum loaded for this channel. However, this is a good way to show how easy it is to load samples from your hard disk to a sampler channel. I am going to find a kick drum that I like from the sample packs that come installed with FL Studio. Clicking on the samples will allow you to audition them. Once you have located the desired sample, simply click and drag the sample to the channel button for the desired channel. The channel is automatically renamed to the name of the sample file that was loaded. You can simply right click on the channel button and choose rename from the pop-up menu and type in a more user friendly name. Ok, with the sample loaded on its own channel, let's dive into programming. I'm going to keep it extremely simple so you can get the idea of how it all works. Feel free to experiment with your own level of music complexity. I'm going to start by clicking on the pads for the first sixteenth note of beats 1 and 3, then press the play button to have a listen. Before pressing play, be sure that you have selected pattern from the playback selector. What you are now hearing is as I said, a simple kick playing on beats 1 and 3. Next I'm going to audition a few samples to find a good snare. Once I have one that I like, I will drag it up to the snare channel of the default song. Keep in mind that you can drag a sample to any empty channel as well. With my snare sample loaded in place, I will set the pattern sequencer to trigger the snare on beats 2 and 4. You can now hear even more of our simple drum pattern forming. The next step would be to audition and add my hi-hat samples. I will program them in to play on every 8th note. Now we have an incredibly mind-numbing simple drum beat. This beat sounds a little robotic, so let's see how we can use the velocity graph to make the drum sound a little more human. I'll start on the hi-hat channel. By clicking on the graph button at the top of the pattern sequencer, we'll make the graph editor appear for the selected channel. By default, you should be viewing the pink lines of the velocity graph. If not, you can use the scroll bar at the bottom of the graph to scroll to where you will find the velocity page. Next, let's alter the levels of the trigger notes so that the hats will sound more human-like by making each note have its own velocity level. After that, I'll do the same to the kick and the snare. Now you can use the levels and the pan controls on the left of each channel to build a basic mix of the channels. And there you have an extremely simple drum beat. A little too basic, I am sure. But the point is to show how the pattern sequencer works. But let's take this a little further. The pattern sequencer is great for building drum lines due to its one shot nature. But this may not be good if you want to build a more melodic synth line on top of the drum beat. To demonstrate, I'm going to program a synth line using an included synth plugin and the step sequencer. Let's use the Sim Synth. Add the synth to a new channel in one easy step by selecting Add One from the Channels menu, then choosing Sim Synth Plugin from the list. This will add a new channel as well as the loaded synth plugin into that channel. To hear the synth, you can click on the Sim Synth channel to open the channel settings window, then play a few notes from the on screen keyboard. Now, with the plugin loaded, let's try programming some notes with the pattern sequencer. 
I am just going to stick a note at each beat. Right away you can hear the note being played at each beat. If we wanted to change the pitch of each note, we would need to open up the keyboard editor and set the pitch for each note. A little better, but still a touch synthetic. The reason for this is that the pattern sequencer more or less triggers the sound. It gives you no direct control over things such as note length, nor will it allow you to program chords. This is why I said that the pattern sequencer is great for drums, where each sample is merely a one-shot trigger. So what can you do to take further control? The piano roll. The piano roll gives you far more control musically than the pattern sequencer. To turn the channel into a piano roll channel, you only need to right click on the channel button, then select send to piano roll. The piano roll window will appear. We won't be going into too much detail on the piano roll window. For more information, please see our tutorial on the piano roll. But for now, what I will do is give you a few examples of what can be done here. I will be programming in a simple synth line. I'll only need to use two tools to achieve this. These tools are the chord tool and the arpeggiator. Using the chord tool, I will select a major chord, and without getting fancy, draw in a C chord. Next, I will choose the arpeggiator tool to apply arpeggiator to this chord. And there we have a simple synth line that we can further tweak. Now, while I'm talking about working with the piano roll, I should point out that any channels that have a pattern programmed into the pattern sequencer when sent to the piano roll, the pre-programmed pattern will be converted and automatically placed into the piano roll. Okay, so now that I have programmed some simple patterns, in the next video we'll take a look at how to build a song using those patterns with FL Studio's playlist window.